So the first video looked at the three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, considered their properties, and then also looked at um, changes of state and the fact that temperature was um, how we, changing the temperature was how we were able to change the state of a substance. In the second video, we looked at the particle model or particle theory about um, how the particles are arranged and their energy and so on and their motion and how that helped explain the properties of the different states of matter. And now what we're going to do is to um, put together that particle model and the actual changes of state that we, that we saw in the first video. So we said it was about changing temperature. Um, that's how we could change state. Really what we're saying is about how much energy we have either given to the substance or taken away from the substance, because really temperature is, is essentially a measure of the energy that the substance has. So if we want to change a, uh, change a substance's state from say a solid to a liquid, then we have got to put energy into it. We've got to increase its temperature. We can think about uh, what we've done on the particle model to, to explain those changes of state. So here, both of these images are showing um, a substance in, in, in terms of, both of these are solid, sorry, solid Im images of solids of a substance. But what you can see on the right hand side is that the particles are vibrating about their fixed positions much, much more. So how have we changed the left to the right? We've done that by basically uh, giving the particles more energy. We've done that by increasing the temperature of the substance. Now, it doesn't take much more energy for those particles on the right hand side to now be to have enough to sort of overcome the forces of attraction to overcome the stickiness that's between them so that we actually change state so heating the particles is going to make them vibrate more and more they're gaining energy we can just about get judge i think from the two boxes is that the material is expanding so if we look at the right it is actually just taking up a little bit more space its volume is increasing um, and this is true of nearly every substance so nearly every substance that exists uh, if you heat it up heat up the solid it will expand um, now um, there is one substance that we're very familiar with that does the opposite to this and that is actually very unusual but this is a substance that we see all the time. So the one exception to this that we need to be aware of is um, water. So actually it's, it's the reverse of this. So ice actually has, the solid form has a greater volume than the liquid form. And that's, that's extremely unusual. You, you know that's the case because ice floats in water. Um, but nearly everything else that exists, it's the opposite. Uh, nearly everything else that exists um, you heat a material up and its volume increases. This is one of the reasons why sometimes when you're crossing bridges um, you might find um, almost like uh, little metal combs or teeth um, somewhere maybe in the middle or along where there's a little gap uh, between the two sort of combs of metal and that's really to allow for when it's a hot summer's day that the metal expands, the bridge expands a little bit and to just allow some space for it to expand into so that um, it doesn't cause any problems. Um, but generally speaking anyway, um, except for water, that's the one exception, if you heat any substance up um, and it's a solid and you heat that solid up even before it changes liquid, changes into a liquid, its volume will increase slightly. Now, if we keep heating, um, so we've heated it up so the particles are vibrating more and more. Eventually, the particles are going to have so much energy, they can, they can sort of basically become a liquid. So they can overcome their forces of attraction to a certain extent um, so that they actually become a liquid. So we have to put energy in to melt a substance. We have to increase its temperature. But we can see how that works in terms of the particle model. We're just making the particles vibrate more and more and more until eventually they're, they're going to be free to move around each other. So obviously we've talked about melting before. This is what I've just been describing. Um, heating makes the particles vibrate more. 
um, and then eventually they have enough energy to break away from the other particles. So we said this, uh, we had this on an earlier video, in fact on the previous video, sorry. So um, one of the things um, that we looked at was calcium and iron and we looked at their, their different melting points and how iron's melting point was nearly double that of calcium's and um, both of them were solid at room temperature, both of them would be solid if we had them in front of us now. That tells us that there are strong forces of attraction between the particles in calcium and strong forces of attraction between the particles in iron. But the fact that the melting point was so much higher for iron told us that the forces of attraction in iron were much greater than those in calcium. So we would have to put in more energy uh, to make iron change state. So a higher melting point or a higher boiling point means stronger forces of attraction. If we consider freezing, freezing is just the opposite of melting. So here the particles are in effect um, losing energy. So as a liquid they've got a lot more energy and they're able to free to move but if you are able to if energy is able to transfer away from the from the substance then we come we um, freeze the substance uh, the particles are now vibrating about a fixed point and if we continue to remove energy from the substance they will vibrate less and less so obviously freezing is the opposite of melting it happens at the same temperature and here the substance is losing energy to its surroundings and that's going to make the particles move more slowly. In boiling if you are continuing to heat the liquid again just as with the solid to a liquid the particles gain energy and um, if they gain enough energy so that they're able to break free from each other then we've got the change in state. So you get, keep supplying the energy eventually the particles have enough to escape each other completely and that's what we get when um, when something boils and conversely with condensing it's the opposite so it's the opposite of boiling so we reduce the temperature which means the particles are losing energy uh, if they're losing energy they're going to move less and less and then eventually um, then the forces of attraction are going to be stronger than the energy that the particles have and we will return back to a liquid. So uh, we're going to look at a simulation of um, of heating a substance, it's going to be ice, so hopefully this works okay. So if I just click on that link, okay, all right, so um, we're going to take it all the way to being a gas. So what we've got in the glass here is ice. Um, you can just about see the particles um, there. Um, I think you can probably just about see that they are vibrating or maybe albeit quite slowly, but they are jiggling. And you can see that the temperature um, of the ice is minus 50 degrees Celsius. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat it up. So pressing this button is basically going to turn the heater underneath the glass on. Uh, so we're going to be providing more and more energy to the particles. Um, we're going to have an idea of how much energy they've got from the temperature. So obviously the higher the temperature, the more energy they've got. And then what this graph is going to do is uh, it's going to track how much energy we give the particles. So that's what the x-axis here is. So this is, you know, start heating it and then it's going to go along. Um, we just keep heating it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to track how the temperature or what the actual temperature is at uh, whilst we heat it okay and then we're going to be able to also observe what's actually happening to the particles here okay so so it's look it's heating up very rapidly um, it's now reached zero so you can see it's melting but really importantly to notice here is that the temperature is not changing it's only once all of the ice has melted um, that we start to see um, the substance temperature increase again. So only once it's it's all liquid do we see the temperature rise or the temperature increase again. So you can see the temperature is increasing, increasing in a, you know rates because that, that the heater is still on. Occasionally we see um, a water particle fly off. So that's evaporation, right? So that's happening at a temperature that is below uh, the boiling point. Um, so there is some water evaporating um, as we go along. Getting really close to the boiling point now. 
okay so now we hit the boiling point and what's happening is here it's boiling so the particles are, um, are leaving much more rapidly than they were when it was um, evaporating but notice that the temperature is staying constant at 100 degrees celsius while this is happening so whilst we've got still got liquid and it's turning into gas it remains at 100 degrees celsius now once all of the particles are um, now we've got everything in, in the gas state now the temperature is able to increase again okay and we can see that the temperature is increasing so we've got this graph and whenever the substance is changing state you'll notice there's a horizontal line um, and so whenever it's changing state the uh, we may still be putting more energy in that's what the x-axis is showing us we're still putting more energy in but the temperature isn't actually changing until the entire state changes occurred in which case it starts to heat up again so this first slope on the left here that's when the, um, it was ice the second slope was when it was water and the third slope was when it was steam and the bits in between from 10 to 20 here that's when the ice was melting to become water and from 40 to 60 was when the water was boiling to become steam So this is a sort of a picture of the same graph um, with a bit of with those state changes of, um, listed, but also just a picture here of the particle model in those different states. So this is perhaps surprising, but um, this is actually what what genuinely happens when we are heating a substance like water, sorry, like ice up, and it turns to water, it melts to become water and then boils to become steam and if we were measuring the temperature while it did all of that uh, we would we would see that there were these flat points where the state changes um, happened okay so uh, just thinking about those changes of state um, and thinking about what happens so we've got our ice turning into water turning into steam um, and there's our um, our particle models to reflect those different states um, now um, one thing that we've got to appreciate here is even though we're changing from our particles being closely packed still closely packed but perhaps slightly less so to not really to being far apart the number of particles is not going to change the total number of particles is not going to change so we've got to appreciate that if we had 10 grams of ice and we turned it all into water we would still have 10 grams and if we turned all of that water into steam we would still have 10 grams that's a very very important thing to realize when we change state the number of particles has to stay the same it's just their arrangement and their energy that's different but they don't vanish they don't disappear this is called uh, the conservation of mass so Changing state does not change the number of particles. The number of particles always stays the same. It's only the, how close they are to each other. It's how they're arranged. It's how their motion is that they're the only things that change. That means the total mass, uh, and that's a measure of how much stuff there is. The total mass of the substance stays the same. Um, we call that the conservation of mass. So that is a, a very important thing to realize um, from the particle model uh, regarding changes of state. So that's the end of our third video. We've just got one more to do, which is going to consider pressure of gases under fusion. Um, but if you have any queries, just let me know.